In this video, as the title says, what we'd like to talk about are the resistors that are often used with a transistor. If you look at the past several videos where we use a transistor in a variety of situations to get a good tutorial going, there's always these resistors that were used en route to get the transistor hooked up and ready to go. There's always one here, sort of connected to the base. And in most cases, there was one up here as well. Or this could have been the device. So maybe I'll just draw a box right here and say that could have been here too. And this is sort of the device that we were hooking up, like the light bulb with a buzzer or what have you. So let's just talk a little bit about the resi these resistors, because in part, we were a little clumsy about it in the previous videos, and we just want to make sure we get a few thoughts across here. Okay, let's talk about this resistor first right here. And let's say we don't really know what the resistance of it is, so we'll just call it R. Now, in some of the previous videos that we showed, we were turning the transistor on by connecting this resistor right here to something as high as 9 volts. And so what we want to look at here is just what effects does it have on the transistor. And remember that in all of our uses here, Rose is going to ground this emitter right here. Just keep that grounded. So what we have here is as the current flows out of this 9-volt battery, it'll flow through this resistor into the base of the transistor and sort of through it and out of the emitter right there. Um, so what we like to consider here is, well, what value does this R really need to be or does it even need to be there at all? Uh, and one reason why we're even putting this video out here is because these transistors, these little black things that we were using here, look like this, of course, they're not indestructible. They can definitely be blown out quite easily if too much current or, or the, goes through them or they start getting too hot. They're sort of one and the same thing. So we like to look at, well, what resistors do we need here and perhaps even here to prevent this from happening? They don't cost very much. They're easy to replace. But of course, if you take care of them, they'll take care of you and you'll have a nice working circuit. Let's just see what we have here because there's a bit of interesting circuit analysis to be done here. Okay. So what we have here is we have, if you think of the voltage now that we would see as we traveled from this 9-volt battery down through the emitter right here, what we do, if we just sort of start maybe right here, we'd sort of be at plus 9 volts, wouldn't we? Because we're sort of at this highest potential of the circuit right here. Then what will happen is if we were electrons, we'd start at 9 volts and start falling through the circuit here. That's sort of what electrons do. We'd hit this resistor right here, and we start traveling through the res this resistor here as current, and we know that Ohm's law says the voltage drop across the resistor is going to be IR. And I'm putting a minus sign right there because when electrons travel through a resistor like that, they always lose some potential or lose some potential energy. So it's going to be a minus IR. And the other thing that happens that we know, and this is sort of an interesting operating point about transistors here, uh, we'll try to put some general rules out there, is that when the transistor is fully on and operating, the voltage between the base and the emitter here is about 0.6 volts. So what that means if you were the electrons is you have another little voltage drop to go through. You start at 9, you do the Ohm's law voltage drop through this resistor right here, then you drop another 6 tenths of a volt as you cross the base emitter junction on your way to ground here. Remember here that ground here always represents 0 volts. So when we're done, we're at ground here, and so the entire sort of equation equals 0. Now we're trying to leave the mathematical analysis out of these videos as much as possible. We're just trying to focus on building and getting things to work. But oftentimes a little bit of this analysis like this helps you to understand some of the limitations of the device here. So that's sort of why we're doing this. So why don't we just solve this al algebraically for I, the current that is flowing from the battery through the resistor, through the base, and out of the emitter right there. We'd get something like 9 minus the 0.6 over R. And now what we did in the previous videos is usually we set R equal to something like 100 ohms. So this is going to be 8.4 on the top divided by 100 ohms in the bottom. Now if I solve that for the current, this will actually be the amount of current that's traveling through the base of the transistor out to the emitter right there. I'm going to get something like 84 milliamps. Because 8.4 divided by 100 it's 0 0.0084 and times 1,000 for convert to mill. We get about 84 milliamps. So what about that current? Is it high or low or what? Well, it is a bit high for a small device like that, 84 milliamps. Uh, you can remember that an LED or something like that will come on and shine quite brightly at about 10 or 15 milliamps, something like that. And so what we do, though, is, well, do we need to back off? Do we need to increase this resistance? Because you see, once again, the resistor is in the bottom of this equation right here. So... 
that's typical of Ohm's law. If we increase this resistor right here from 100, maybe to 200 or 1,000, we can definitely cut down on the current and probably still get that transistor to turn on. But we just sort of have 100 lying around in our parts box right there. So is it too high? Well, the other thing you can do that we did is we just looked up the data sheet. The transistors we're using are so-called these 2N2222s here. And we looked up the data sheet and found that the peak base current here and by peak, they mean sort of the current that you would need to not exceed if you don't want to blow the transistor, is 200 milliamps. So for this transistor, we did okay. We were a bit sloppy. We just were throwing in any resistor we could find at the 100 ohms right there, which is a relatively small resistor. Maybe a 1K, a 1,000 would have been a more generic one to put in there. But we were less than halfway to the maximum rating of the transistor right there. So we were okay on the base emitter side right there. Probably no chance we're going to blow the transistor that way. Where I think probably we were the most sloppy was up here on the device, and many times when we were inserting, remember in the previous video, something like a light bulb like that, or the buzzer, or that motor there, we entirely omitted this resistor right here. We omitted this resistor right here. There was no resistor in there at all. That's a bit dangerous to do because then when the transistor is on, a very similar analysis here would hold because also across the collector emitter when the transistor is on is also going to be another about a 0.6 voltage drop between the collector and the emitter when that transistor is fully on. It can be a different number, but when it's fully on, it's about 0.6. And so by the same analysis here, if we completely omitted this resistor as we did in a lot of cases here, the denominator of this fraction is going to be very small. So the current could get quite large. And on the same data sheet, we sort of looked up the maximum current for the collector emitter and we got another number. It's a bit higher. It's about 800 milliamps. And remember, just for a comparison here, one amp is 1,000 milliamps. And so an amp might be something that registers a bit more with, uh, with you in terms of current uh, magnitudes, one amp. Uh, anyway, but by omitting the resistor in here, I think we probably were driving the transistor a bit hard. Now, in some of the circuits that pulse things where the light was flashing on and off, then sometimes you can get away with putting a little more current through the devices than is advertised because in pulse mode the current has the, the transistor has time to cool off when the circuit is off. But when the circuit's say on constantly, you might need to be more aware of that because heat starts to build up and the transistor could just start melting down there. So we were a bit sloppy, but also what we kept in mind as we were doing the videos here is these devices, remember, have some of their own resistance. They had this was in our mind the R. So again, if I take this resistor out, which we could explicitly put in there, and, and just substitute it with the device, we sort of knew in our minds that when we turn the transistor on, as the current flowed down this way from the collector to the emitter, it was encountering some resistance. It was encountering the light bulb. Now, the light bulb has a very small resistance, only a couple of ohms or something like that, so we were probably risking the, the health of the transistor by just turning on the light bulb without a resistor in there. Probably okay with the buzzer in there. The buzzer is a, a quite large resistance there. And we're probably okay with a motor too, although the motor has you know, pretty low resistance as well, maybe 5 or 10 ohms. So again, just to do some of those back of the envelope calculations, remember that current is those voltage divided by resistance right there. So loosely speaking, with the transistor on, the 9 volts would always become something like 8.4. And if we were down at something like you know 10 ohms for the motor armature right there, you see we're sort of approaching... 0.84 amps, which is about 840 milliamps. So we are approaching, if not exceeding a bit, the maximum advertised current for the device there. And I'm sure we exceeded it when we put the light bulb in. And these have a very small resistance, maybe an ohm or less or something. So we are sort of looking at maybe pulsing, you know, as much as 10 amps in there, just very briefly in there. But then the resistance of the light bulb also changes when it gets hot. So it's hard to classify. And I'm sure we're pretty safe with the uh, with a buzzer in there. So we just wanted to close the video by just having you remember then that these, these transistors, they do require a bit of an experimentation, a bit of fiddling around with to get them to work. But as you use them like this, just remember that there are two resistors, one on the base here and one on the emitter right there. And oftentimes this is the one that's going to go up to your plus power supply, plus V, whatever you're using, 9 volt battery, 1.5 volt battery. Oftentimes the emitter over here is grounded. And just try to keep in mind here that these do have a purpose, usually in just protecting the transistor here. And if you always sort of default to maybe put a one kilo ohm resistor in for this here, I think you'll always be okay on the base side right here. And in here, decide what you want to do here. You need to sort of choose what R you're going to use in here. And there's a bit of an interplay because if you put any resistance in with a light bulb, you'd never get it to turn on because the light bulbs really need a lot of current in there. Uh, and if you started, you know, 
if your buzzer isn't coming on loud enough or your motor isn't fast enough, you'll have to decrease this resistance if you include one at all to sort of get the desired properties that you want. And also keep in mind that there are different types of transistors. We use this 2N2222 that's in these small plastic cases here, but there's a much more variety, much bigger variety of transistors out there. There's just, just hundreds you can choose from that come in big metal cans and big cases that can dissipate more heat that could probably sustain some current where these might immediately just melt and blow. So just keep that in mind, these two resistors, what their purpose is for. And we were just a tad bit sloppy in some of the work we did, but we're just trying to get some of the salient features of transistors across to you here.